It was a usual day of 1933 for kids near Steelville, Missouri. They were rummaging the ground for arrowheads when they stumbled across something incredible. When their find was brought to Dr. Parker in the town, he couldn't believe his eyes. It was the skeleton of a human at least two and a half meters tall. An adult man looked short next to such a giant. Dr. Parker immediately sent the skeleton to the Smithsonian Institution, expecting an impending influx of archaeologists in Steelville. But there never was one. You see, the Smithsonian would later inform Dr. Parker they had never received any giant skeleton. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. This whole story sounds a lot like an urban legend, but only until you look at this map. It shows all giant skeletons or their fragments found in North America over the past 200 years. And without any exception, each find was seized and repatriated under the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. Somehow, after that, no one heard about giant skeletons again. Is it just me, or does this actually smell fishy? As if they're trying to hide the truth. What if there was an entire race of giants that left traces in Earth's past and actively interacted with our ancestors? Or maybe they were creatures from other worlds. In this video, we'll try to uncover the truth. Did giants once walk our Earth for real? And who were they? Anthropologists will tell you that most accounts of stumbling upon giants are exaggerations. But is it really so? During his expedition to circumnavigate the globe, Portuguese Captain Ferdinand Magellan described a curious case in the logbook. In Argentina, his crew discovered a giant dancing and prancing on the shore. According to Magellan, the Europeans were only as high as the giant's waist, so they were a bit afraid. But he and his fellow tribes people turned out to be friendly. Magellan called them Patagones from the Portuguese word pata meaning foot. The captain even wanted to bring two giants to Europe, but on their way back, both he and the mysterious Patagons died. But even despite that, European cartographers began to put giant people on the maps of South America. Moreover, a century after Magellan's expedition, the Dutch merchants Jacob Le Maire and Willem Schoten arrived at the Patagonian shores and later recalled discovering graves with bones of people over three meters tall. However, when in 1766, English Captain John Byron, who incidentally was the poet George Byron's grandfather, went on his own voyage around the world, he didn't find anything like that. According to his logbook, while the Patagones indeed turned out to be taller in general, they were no more than 10 centimeters taller than the tallest crew members. Later, French explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville announced that the tallest Patagon he'd met was just 179 centimeters tall. Today, he wouldn't even make it onto the basketball team. Apparently, Magellan and the Dutch greatly exaggerated their accounts of the Patagonian giants. Besides, there are living people on Earth that are taller than them. For instance, Kurdish farmer Sultan Kosen is as tall as two and a half meters. According to the Guinness Book of Records, he's the tallest living person on the planet. Morocco is home to Kosen's runner-up, Brahim Takula. He's just 2.4 meters tall, but he holds the world record for the largest soles, which are as long as 38 centimeters. Because of that, Brahim can only wear custom-made shoes. The reason behind such gigantic proportions is so-called acromegaly. This disorder affects the production of growth hormones in the pituitary gland. A person with acromegaly is not just taller than others, they also have a thicker and wider skull and larger hands and feet. But even acromegaly has its limits. There's no way it can lead to a height of over two and a half meters. Even this upper limit is a rare occurrence. Residents of the Pauli Arbore area in Sardinia claim that in 1972, local boys found huge mummified bodies nearby that belonged to 
four-meter-tall men. One of the kids grew up to be the sculptor and writer Luigi Muscas, who recalled the discovery in his book published in 2008. With sadness, he observed that, despite the locals' determined attempts to bring it to the attention of the authorities and experts, no one treated the giant find seriously. The best the kids got were accusations of plotting a hoax. Time passed and mummies crumbled, so we can't find out who was right back then. But what if it's nothing else than a deliberate destruction of evidence by the scientific community? What if the giants are humanity's ancestors we aren't allowed to know about, especially given that the strange discoveries still get massive coverage from time to time? Take, for example, the remains discovered in China. They presumably come from the Longshan culture, which is over 4,000 years old. When it was still a person, the skeleton had an impressive height of 193 centimeters. But the most exciting part is that anthropologists are sure it was a teenager, and he had no signs of acromegaly or other disorders. And considering he still had some growing up to do, it's not hard to imagine his parents as three-meter-tall giants, no less. But the the strangest thing is that scientists found three small and very even holes in the right parietal bone of the skull. To this day, this discovery still hasn't received a clear explanation. Besides, skeletons like this are found not only in China. In 1774, in West Virginia, one Jack Parsons spotted a bone sticking from the ground near the Cheat River, which had overflown its banks just recently. Mr. Parsons was sure the bone belonged to a giant beast, but upon getting it out, he discovered that it was actually a human thigh bone, except it was tremendous. It was about 18 centimeters longer than Jack's. He went on searching and uncovered a whole skeleton with the height of about two and a half meters. It could have been explained with acromegaly, except that it's a unique condition. While subsequent settlers found multiple giant skeletons near the Cheat River, they even dubbed the area the Giant Town. Could it be that an entire tribe of giants once lived there? I mean, not far from that place, still in West Virginia. In 1839, archaeologists working at the Grave Creek Mound found skeletons just as tall, reaching almost two and a half meters. According to local legends, those mounds were the creation of a race that inhabited the area even before the Native Americans. What an excellent starting point for research, more so it would seem. But despite multiple discoveries of giant bones in West Virginian mounds, their stories only go as far as being mentioned in a couple of newspapers. Scientists either dismiss these finds as insignificant or are wary of meddling with them for some other reason, leaving them lying around in the institution's basements. Anyway, even the West Virginian burial mounds of giants pale in comparison to those found in Death Valley. A Paiute named Tom Wilson claims it's where his grandfather discovered vast underground caverns with a whole network of tunnels. He roamed the tunnels for a long time until he eventually found no less than an underground city. Extremely tall, fair-skinned people lived there. They spoke an unknown language, wore clothes made from the skins of strange animals, and were sustained by a food he'd never seen before. Those could well have been grandfather's tales, if not for the fact that others told them too. An almost identical story was told by a prospector named Burke Lee, who wasn't interested in giants at all. In 1932, two men working for him were looking for gold deposits when they fell into a huge underground cavern and got lost. Trying to find their way out, they followed the tunnels some 32 kilometers long until they reached an entrance to some ancient burial halls. They said there were several perfectly preserved and incredibly tall human mummies surrounded by heaps of treasures. They even brought a few gold artifacts to their boss as proof. But when archaeologists asked them to show the entrance to the caverns, it was no longer there. Apparently, pouring rain caused a flood and the landscape changed significantly. The prospectors ended up embarking on the search for the cave tombs of Penament on their own, but never returned. Although a mere 50 
18 years later, in 1947, archaeologists found the tunnels under Death Valley. By complete accident, Dr. Bruce Russell and Dr. Daniel Bovey came across a network of underground passages and tunnels when sinking a mining shaft. In those catacombs, they discovered the remains of three giant men that were as tall as two and a half to three meters. Sounds incredible, but according to them, the mummies were dressed in jackets and short trousers made of an unknown fabric. They were surrounded by multiple artifacts with strange writings. But what surprised the archaeologists most were the remains of saber-toothed tigers, mammoths, and even dinosaurs. But their colleagues were skeptical about their accounts because there were tens of millions of years between people and these animals. Although Russell and Bovey didn't claim that they all lived at the same time, giant humans might have found the bones of ancient animals and brought them back to their cave to study, as modern archaeologists would do. Sadly, the theory never got checked. Russell and Bovey didn't manage to find the spot again because of the desert's changing landscape. But the eeriest part of this story is that they both vanished before long. Their car was found with a burst radiator in a remote area of Death Valley without a trace of bodies nearby. And given that something just as demonic occasionally happens when it comes to giant finds, all that's usually left to do is rely on eyewitness accounts and testimonies simply ignored by science. But if you dig deeper into such stories, you'll see that ancient giants are not quite similar to the lost subspecies of Homo sapiens. Actually, in many cases, these creatures treated our ancestors as we treat animals. If giants did exist, they rarely brought our ancestors anything but death and destruction. For example, the legends of the already mentioned Paiutes say that the indigenous tribe members weren't just neighbors with the giant anthropomorphic creatures with their skin, they were their victims. These giants often attacked Paiute settlements, killed their horses, and even ate the people. Such raids continued for years until all the tribes in the valley of Lake Lahontan united against the invaders. Together, the Paiutes managed to defeat the giants and drive those still alive into caves. To get rid of their tormentors for good, people set fire to the entrance and covered it with rocks. Or at least, that's the story of the war between the Paiutes and giants, as the chief's daughter Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins recorded it in 1882. In her book, Life Among the Paiutes, Sarah claimed that it all had actually happened and that the giants had been pushed into Lovelock Cave. And when archaeologists went down there in the early 20th century, they actually found thousands of artifacts, but most importantly, multiple giant bones whose origins remain unexplained to this day. Although that didn't stop scientists from eventually burying them, declaring that stories about battles with giants were nothing more than local mythology. After you hear such tales, you rethink the Greek myths of bloodthirsty one-eyed cyclops that also relished cannibalism. And despite archaeologists' discoveries of strange skulls with large indentations in the Mediterranean, all of them were considered the remains of elephants. Could that be a mistake? Besides, residents of some regions of South America don't find mentions of giants funny. The local 16th century author Garcilaso de la Vega wrote about locals' encounters with murderous giants as if they had happened in real life. He wrote that giants at least twice as tall as ordinary people sailed to the shores of the Santa Elena Peninsula in modern-day Ecuador on huge rafts. The giants, wrapped in something resembling animal skins, set up camp and dug huge wells. They didn't pay any attention to the locals, so the the latter found a way to reach the wells and taste the water, which turned out to be incredibly delicious. Next thing they knew, the giants attacked them. They ravaged the nearest village. But worst of all, they left hardly any villager uneaten. Then, as if nothing had happened, the giants built huge huts on what had been the battlefield not so long ago and would fish and hunt in the area until one day they just vanished. 
In his retelling of the events, Garcilaso de la Vega claimed that many Spanish explorers would visit the giant's village to gape at the huge huts and wells. But because locals avoided the place and believed it was cursed, the jungle devoured the buildings over time. Although some other gigantic buildings have survived to this day. Mexican tribes, for example the Aztecs, believe that the pyramids of Teotihuacan and the Great Pyramid of Cholula were built by creatures up to 4 meters in height and weighing up to 300 kilograms. It sounds incredible, but what if I told you archaeologists still don't know which civilization built these sites? All this circumstantial evidence suggests that the giant Science could have truly superhuman parameters and abilities, and perhaps we would know more about them if the well-illustrated Spanish testimonies about local giants like the Codex de los Rios were available to the public. But this book, along with many of its counterparts, is kept under lock and key in the Vatican. But wait, why all of a sudden is the church so reluctant to talk about ancient giant creatures when even the Bible mentions them? Might it be because these testimonies don't reinforce but undermine the foundations of Christianity? Some of the discoveries are so crazy it's hard not to consider the possibility that giants could have been the supreme beings that ruled the land. Archaeologists have found abnormally large footprints all over the world but usually attributed them to dinosaurs or other gigantic animals. But the footprint discovered in 1995 in Africa stands out among all the others. It's not just enormous. It's as long as 120 centimeters, which would have made its owner at least three times taller than a modern human being. The most incredible thing is that this gigantic bare foot is imprinted in granite, and it can only be soft at a temperature of up to 800 degrees Celsius. Based on this, geologists concluded that no living creature could leave such a trace, so they declared it a natural formation, or else they would have to acknowledge that eons ago, giants with truly superhuman abilities could walk not just earth, but molten lava. The truth is, these creatures were totally real to our ancestors. In 1938, fragments were dug up in Naples. They were part of a human-like skeleton at least 24 meters tall. The curious thing is that the skeleton was found near the Temple of Jupiter, as if it actually belonged to some deity. The giant bones were ultimately lost in the chaos of the Second World War. But could there still be some grounds for such an assumption? In 2013, in the Indian state of Jharkhand, geologist Nitish Priyadarshi discovered many footprints with sandals on and without them. The footprints were only slightly larger than usual. What is interesting though is that the nearby rock had carvings saying that it was the landing site of some giant gods from the heavens. There is even an illustration showing a mysterious flying object. The footprints themselves don't belong to the so-called gods. Their worshippers intentionally left them at the landing site. But those who bear even the slightest acquaintance with Indian epics will hardly find stories like this surprising. Ancient Indian texts feature an abundance of heavenly battles in which gods and flying chariots determined who would rule the world. Some scenes even describe something similar to the use of nuclear weapons in the melted ruins of ancient Indian cities suggest it might have actually happened. What if these creatures were nothing else but colonizers of Earth competing for the right to settle on it? According to these stories, creatures from other worlds, that is, literally other inhabited planets in space, spawned half of the human race. Curiously, these alien gods are invariably described as humanoid beings much taller than average humans. In this light, that giant skeleton of the teenager in the adjacent regions of China doesn't sound so cryptic anymore. A possible explanation for the mysterious holes in his skull would be the use of high-tech weapons. But traces of the War of Supreme Giants can be found not only in Asia. 
In 1974, more than 5,000 statue fragments were discovered in the fields near Cabras on the coast of Sardinia. Experts estimate their age at 3,000 years, and their height, if the sculptures had been intact, would have been two and a half meters. Nothing out of the ordinary, except for the stone giant's extremely strange appearance. Their eyes are perfect concentric circles, and their faces are made up of geometric shapes. All of this is usually explained by the unique artistic vision of the sculptors, but many researchers find it hard to dismiss the idea that they are dealing with images of giant humanoid creatures in spacesuits. And apparently, they were warriors. Sadly, almost nothing is known about the local neurogic civilization that created these statues. If viewed independently, this find means little. But in Sardinia, there are dozens of neurogic crypts referred to as the giant's graves. They have burial chambers 20 to 30 meters long and 2 to 3 meters high. With that much effort it took to dig them, could it be that what we're dealing with here aren't graves, but shelters where giant alien warriors hid from the enemy fire pouring on them? The discovered statues could serve as sort of pointers or monuments created by the local civilization to immortalize their rulers in stone. All these theories are officially considered anti-scientific, but this denial may mean something completely different. Maybe we just choose to oversee all the evidence of giant's existence at all costs simply because we're afraid to realize one terrible truth. For thousands of years, our own planet wasn't ours to rule. It belonged to various giants. No matter how they explain the giant finds from the past, one thing is clear. Giants are sure to appear in the future. As soon as we get further into the solar system, there will be multiple settlements in worlds with low gravity, starting from our moon and ending with the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. For example, gravity on Mars is 62% lower than on Earth, so the passage of time and the change of generations will increasingly stretch the settler skeletons. Eventually, the descendants of the settlers from Earth will look exactly like the semi-legendary giants from the past who terrified our ancestors so much. And that makes it all the easier to imagine an interplanetary war between Earthers and these beings, who will essentially be aliens from other planets. What about you? Which tale of the giant creatures seems the most plausible to you?